Welcome to Armchair Preaching, a podcast of the First Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a podcast about God's Word, the beauty of the gospel, and what it takes to communicate that truth to others. I'm your host, Pastor Zach McGowan, and on today's episode, Pastor John and I talk about the usefulness of the sermons in small group material, and we discuss this week's message in our series entitled, Our Calling. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome back, everybody, to Armchair Preaching today, back with Pastor John. and uh, Episode number, where are we? 176, I think, oh, yeah, 176. Yeah, yeah. And, and after... Two, uh, 200s in the windshield. Two, 200s up front, and, and after 175 episodes, this is the first time we've had to start the entire thing over again for a break in <laughs> in the recording just messed so up. Everybody so did, we did 15 uh, what, minutes of what recording. What we said before was brilliant. <laughs> it was brilliant. And, uh, and, and we're going to do our best to make it this part <laughs> equally brilliant. <laughs> yeah, so so we're in uh, we're in uh, uh, this series uh, entitled Our Calling, and uh, great series so far, second to last. This week's coming up, the last um, sermon in this series, yeah. uh, which is um, it's it's going to be brilliant. Yeah. The the last I think <laughs> I think all of them have been. Br- I I love this series. Yeah, it's been a great series. Yeah, we we yeah, it's been a it's been an important series too. Yeah, and one we, of the one of the things that we did talk about in the previous take of this, which I think is important, is you know when this series started, right before the series started, we had a ton of new, new members come in. Yeah, um, probably one of our largest classes. Ever you'll and, see the, their smiling faces um, this Sunday in an insert this Sunday. Yep, and there's 30, 30, 30 of them. Thirty, yeah. thirty of them, and there was a question that was asked to you. Yeah, that one of one of the people asked, uh, "What are the expectations of a member of the church?" And my response was, "Listen to the show up for the next five weeks." Yeah, because that's what this series has been about. It's like, what what are the expectations of this church? They're they're not they're not necessarily the expectations of the church, they're God's expectations of a Christian. Yeah. And they're not exhaustive, but these are really great yeah. umbrella topics. Yeah. You know, they, they you, you can, I think you can fit all the other topics underneath yeah. them. And I, you know, I, I, I said before, I think this is a, a it might be a series that we kind of package in some way. We put them all together and then have them just infinitely available on the website, or give them to new members as they're coming in to say, "Look, this is this is in a nutshell kind of what the idea of being a member is." And 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 we've mentioned this a bunch, but it's it's given us the opportunity to talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ and and talk about the relationship that we're offered in Jesus Christ and then what comes next yeah. you know what so then what you know it's not hey you come get your name on a piece of paper and then you go live your life exactly as you lived it should the the, the effect of the gospel should be profound on how we organize our time, how we think about our, um, you know, emotional state, how we uh, s- spend our energy and our our resources, and that's what this series has really been been about. Uh, we didn't talk about this in the in the, in the what was lost, but what, <laughs> what 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 that says though is that there's a lot of churches out there that don't have this back end follow up to coming to have a, a great worship experience. Yeah. They have a great worship experience. They do they do really sort of big majestic, you know, whatever type of uh, splashy uh, splashy worship. But then, I mean, we've even heard this in, in staff meetings, there's, there's not much for them to come back to. Yeah. Now, you're, what you're doing with the parents on on uh, Wednesday nights, mm-hmm. that's just booming. Yeah. And the children's ministry and the youth ministry is beginning to really mushroom and just yeah. it's, it's booming and to have things for them to do to grow in their faith and then obviously this week's topics to be able to put their growth and their their maturity to work in this in serving in the church uh it's you know it, not every church not every church makes that sort of robust you know set of offferings and expectation which is yeah. the series is saying and available to make yeah. it easy for them to do that so but we are we are doing that i, I like that and and i like one of the thing one of the themes that that we've talked about many times in the podcast and in sermons is it it touches on 
basically the three aspects of of our faith development, which is what you know, what you feel, and what you do. Yeah. You know, it's the the head, the heart, and the hands. You know, uh, there's many ways you could describe that three aspects of it, but that's that's this series really unpacks that. You know, and you know, last week we talked about the idea of growing continually, and and we. Uh, put the you put the call out there, or we believe God puts the call out there that we're to, to always grow. And one of the places yeah. to do that is through a, a group setting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it can happen in a lot of ways, but a group setting really is important. And one of the things that is happening in our church right now is you've got groups that are starting to form that are using the the the, the messages to inform the content in the questions that they unpack. You know, what value do you see in that approach? Because I, I know other churches have done that. You and I have done that and given, like, you know, questions for group yeah. study and stuff. Yeah. But, but at least as long as I've been here, that's not been the practice, you know, here. And and so what do you think the value yeah. is in well, that just, approach? I, just uh, imagine a person has gone to church, so they went to the last, they went to worship service, they went to the worship service uh, from Sunday where we talked about serving and serving eagerly. Now they're going on a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night, and they're going into a small group. Now they're engaging, they're, they've, they've seen the sermon, maybe they watched the other sermons because we have, we have two every week. Now they're coming into a group and they're, they're going deeper with that. You may not necessarily... F- find ways to appropriate that in your life to, to make that a reality for how okay what do I do with that I know he said some practical things of application in, in the sermon at, at the end but what am I specifically going to do with that but if I'm sitting in a group room with a group of people and I'm saying they're saying here's what I'm going to do with that oh what yeah. are you going to do with that? here's what I'm going to do with that. well here's what I would do with that yeah. so the ability to engage with this material in a much more personal way is uh, that's just invaluable yeah when I love it you know as we've talked about the contextualization of our sermons, you know, that, that if we preach these in other places, they would be different because the congregations would be different. Yes. This actually takes that, drills that down one more layer or yeah. maybe two more layers or three more layers because it's, it's now, it, it's not just these, you know, large rooms with 250 people in them or 300 people in them. Each of which have their own personalities, well, each which of which, you preach in that setting. Yeah. But, but you also have subsets here. in that yeah. area where, where groups could form or, or whatever that are going to, you know, it's, the application for this week and in, in, for example, you know, in service is going to look different if you are uh, a, a parent with young children versus you know you're retired and you know your 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 health might be in a, in one place stronger than the other but your time is stronger in one place than the other so the application points are different and when you're around other people who have similar life stages they're in a, in, a, in groups that are based around some sort of an affinity they can talk about those things hearing each other like i love that that point that you just said you hear maybe you don't have the idea of how to apply this but you hear somebody else and that sparks the idea yeah. where you and i when we're preaching or when ed or abby or josh or whomever is preaching we can't get into those people's heads but we can offer questions to help spark those conversations. Yeah. And I, I think that's I think that's really, really going to be – and I know some groups have already started this. Josh's uh, men's group on Thursday, that, that's that been a part of his practice. I know he's, Yeah, I know he, he's, and he's done it on – I mean, he didn't totally wait, on wait, for, wait for yeah. us to provide questions. He just – he said he watched the sermon, and he and he – came up with this and and i've been in in josh's groups yeah. on thursday nights and you know he's he's going you know deep deep deep, deep. deep which is the great the great yeah. benefit of that but i know we, i know we talked this is one of the things we, we lost and i think it's worth worth saying if somebody's listening right now um and they are not convinced that being in a small group is something that is for them what would you say to them you know, I I would say that I definitely get that. You know, the 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 authenticity uh, expectation f- can be scary for some people. Um, the 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 introvert in me kind of has a hard time with that. But I'd also say it's important to 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 try it. You know, and and give it a chance and really give it a chance. You know, yeah. give it give it a few weeks. Um, yeah, you can't go one time and, and make a declaration. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's like anything else, right? It's like it's like a kid, you put them on the bike, and the first time they fall down, they're like, well, I'm, that was it. I was bad at that, so I'm not doing that anymore. Yeah. No, no, you get them back up and you ride it. But I, I think 
the the you know the value in the authenticity can be profound you know last you know last night in our parent group which is not really a small group right now um hopefully you know we're going to be we're we're already spawning off and and multiplying new groups so to make them smaller so the authenticity levels higher but even last night with 34 people i was able to share my my heart as we were reading through ecclesiastes 1 and the seeming the seemingly um meaninglessness of things at times you know the pursuits of things that 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 don't that don't give us the 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 feeling of value that we ought to have you know i shared about my my pursuit of higher education and and getting my doctorate and then got to the end of it after five and a half years almost six years of pursuing it and feeling very let down Mm -hmm. (laughs) like Mm -hmm. and and how deflating that was and and how guilty i felt for putting my family through that now i wasn't like you know, lit up and, you know, it was yeah, like, yeah. and, and then also just the, the, the energy that it took. And, and, but it was, when I was sharing that, I, I was doing that to try for one, cause I, I felt like I needed to share that for myself, you know, to articulate that for people beyond just Julie and my family, but also to show people like, Hey, you know, that feeling that you're having after working so hard for that promotion and finally getting it and then feeling like it wasn't as good as you thought it was going to be. Yeah. That's actually normal. And it's actually meant to drive us into the thing that matters the most, yeah. which is our pursuit of, of Jesus Christ. Which you could never do any of that. If, if you, all you did was listen to a sermon on su- sermon yeah. on Sunday, yeah. you might have a conversation at lunchtime with, with somebody immediately after the, the service, but you wouldn't, it w- even that most of those conversations I've ever been a part of have not, they're not really deep dives into the, uh, into the sermon. They're just like, what do you think of the sermon? Yeah. And then I thought that was interesting. I thought that was interesting, but that's a way different thing. And there, and there is, I, there's, there's vulnerability to it. So yeah. if you're thinking about. If it you haven't gone through, it, it, it can be scary, but it's so worth it. It is so worth it. So I would say to anybody who's listening to everything you've just said, echo it entirely. Said, and especially if you are an introvert and really that's you know kind of have that cards close to the vest, you know, m- yeah. mindset. It is so worth it to to open that up a, a little bit so that you can because it, it just you will find yourself growing when you push through that. I I I, I did not want to do this when I. Yeah. As a young Christian, I did not want to be in a small group. Like, and I'll tell you, I, I was, I was, I was. Um, it was weird because why would anybody expect a twenty-eight year old to to know something about the Bible when I had not been around it very much? But I thought that I should myself, and I was afraid that I was going to be embarrassed uh, by what I didn't know. And that was not my experience at all. They were like, "That's cool. You are you are where you are." Yeah. And so I, I you know, it, I, I just dealt with it the first time. I pushed through it. You'd said that earlier. I pushed through that. I came back the second time, and by the third time, and I I got it, and I was I was in. Yeah, and and I think that's a I th- uh, I, I think it's a a pretty standard pattern for folks. It's that that that's that third time in into that fourth time, people yeah. start to feel like okay, this is not. These aren't I'm, I'm known. Yeah, I they're not weirdos. Them. You know, yeah. they're not. This is not that strange. I mean, yes, we're talking about the Bible, but it's like they they discover it can be as easy as talking about yeah. anything else that you're passionate about. You yeah. know, and for whatever reason, um, I was I was speaking to some guys yesterday about another small group and and how there's still not this vulnerability there. You know, and and. They'll, you know, the, the the group will take the vulnerability f- uh, on a lot of different areas of their lives. You know, the correction about their jobs, the correction about, you know, athletic ability or whatever. Yeah. But for whatever reason, the spirituality piece gets to be a hang up. Yeah. Um, but you got to put, you know, if you can push through it, you will find this this wealth of relational depth and and and. It's, it's where the real growth happens. Yeah, yeah, it really, really is, and and leads us into. To a deeper relationship with not just with the other people in the group, but with God. Yeah. And I find that it's even changed my relationship with my family. You know, I find that when I'm in groups and, and it helps all those areas, it also models things for my children um, that I think are valuable lessons for them to learn. And and um, it opens our, our eyes to, to some pretty incredible, incredible things.
Hey guys, in a moment we'll get back to the podcast, but in this little break, I want to let you know about something new that's happening at the First Presbyterian Church here in Lakeland. We are going to be utilizing something called Planning Center Online and the Church Center app. This is a wonderful communication and church management tool that helps us stay connected to one another, to our small groups, and to events and information from the church. So right now you're going to be hearing a lot more about this in the days and weeks to come. But if you're curious about what the Church Center app is all about, you can go on your phone, whether Android or uh, uh, iPhones, and you can search for the Church Center app. You can download that application. And then when you're there, you can sign up to join um, our congregation's kind of network on the Church Center app. You can search for our church, First Presbyterian Church, Lakeland, Florida. Make sure you search those words. And then you can follow the prompts to sign up. They're going to ask for your cell phone number and send you a code. And if you're already in our system, it'll link you to uh, kind of your your profile. From there, you can find sermons, you can find information, calendars, and all that. It's going to be a great tool. You're going to be hearing more about that from the pulpit. You're going to be hearing more about that um, in future podcasts and videos. Um, But uh, if you want to get ahead and start exploring uh, this very secure, very private network, we encourage you to check out the Church Center app, search for our congregation, and get leaked up today. Now back to the podcast. And, you know, that really... um, kind of leads us from last week to this week. So kind of a bridge from last week where we talked about growing continually into this week, which is talking about serving eagerly. And and, uh, this side of it is still part of the growth process, right? Because without this, it becomes a very internalized, consumer-based faith, right? And you just said something which was interesting that there... There are churches, and this is—I don't want, like. We're not trying to disparage what other church, how other churches do things, but it, I feel like when you when you just hone in on great worship experiences, corporate worship experiences, or even great small group experiences, mm-hmm. and then pff, that's it. <laughs> yeah, you you create a consumer mindset of spirituality, which is both of those can be consumer. Based. Consumption oriented. Yeah. I'm, I'm here to receive something, which is a terrible theology for worship, but yeah. that's the mindset. I'm yeah. here to receive something, and then I'm here to grow in my personal faith. Yeah, both of them are important. Worship is important. Growing in faith is important. That's why we had two sermons on yeah. that very very topic here. But if it stops there, I mean, there's the, the the outward part of it is completely missing. Yeah. Well, in both of those things, worship and growth should in light of what Jesus has done, lead to lives of service. Service is actually enacted individual worship, right? Yeah, it's it's acted. In, in response to who yeah. God is, what God has done, we now we're going to live a certain way. Yeah. And we we jumped off with uh, Joshua 24, 14, and 15, right. which I, I think is... Did your a, grandmother who really have... Did your grandmother have... Did you have a grandmother made quilted or cross stitched my, my uh, grandmother i'm i'm in your I, home I, I growing up visualize that someplace in my, as world, in my house was, we yeah, shall serve the, yeah as for me in my house we'll serve the lord yeah. i mean you have them all over your house now i do i do i actually made one i did a calligraphy one that I, the one in my garage is the one i made oh, yeah. myself and how I, many was, do you have do you know i have uh, well i have two on the back on the back mm-hmm. side of my front door it's a little little uh, a cross and has that on there. Um, and I've actually given that away to, to a handful of people as well. Um, and then I have the one that I made in college in my garage. So, okay. so both main ways people come in the door, I see it on the way in with my, on the, on, to my garage and on the way out of the front door. It's a powerful passage, though. It is right? great. And yeah. I love the context of the yeah. passage. Yeah, and you spoke too. more about the context of the passage, which well, is great. Well, because to me, I, I think <sighs> Joshua is one of those books that, that like people have a hard time with. I don't know if you've ever met people that when they start reading the book of Joshua, they're like... The conquest, you mean? Holy smokes, there's a lot of death and destruction yeah. <laughs> in that, right? Clear out the people who are already here. And this I will mean, be your new land. Like scorched earth policy in, in a lot of those, right? And, yeah. and, and those are... That wasn't even cutting room floor. That was like, I'm not even going to remotely touch yeah. this part. Um, but for me, just you know, the whole series of events that led to that 
um, declaration by Joshua all the way from Abraham because Joshua was so such a faithful leader. When you look at you – know, Joshua I don't think gets enough – credit you know when we think of like the big heroes of faith yeah he needs to be up there he really does because you think of abraham your son's namesake does as well well yeah because there are two sides of the same coin yeah i mean but like joshua is the only joshua and caleb are the only two from the generation that left egypt to enter into the promised land, they were young, young men when they left the prom- when they left Egypt. Yeah, middle aged, middle aged men when they middle aged men by the time they get to the promised land. But, but Joshua was taken up the mantle from Moses, who after forty years doesn't get to enter the promised land. He gets to see, see it, it from Nebo, yeah, because of his because of because of his own shortcomings, right? Mm-hmm. And so, but Joshua has been there from. I mean, you think about it; he was raised in slavery. And I didn't get into the personal side for Joshua. I stayed big picture, right? Um, but he's seen the slavery. He's been in 40 years in the wilderness. He now has seven years of conquest. And they're at the cusp of dividing up, you know, they're, they're dividing up the land and who's getting what. And, and, and what I love about this is... And I said this in the sermon. There was actually more to it initially. It's got cutting room floor a little bit. Was that Joshua does not say choose you know choose if you serve. You know the idea is you will serve something. Yeah. It's the Bob Dylan. I thought you were going. to. I heard it coming. I've, I've, when you, when you were saying I, that. Here comes Bob Dylan. If if you're I gonna, had, everyone you're going to serve something. This is the one. This is the one. If I had been in classic, I probably would have mentioned that because I think I would have gotten more play in classic yeah, if I had true. mentioned that. Um, and because I have before when I've preached on service. Uh, but it it it's, and he says, look, if if it's if it's, and again, we didn't get into the what does it mean if it's evil in your eyes. I mean, there's a ton there that you could get in the Hebrew because it was really just a jumping off point, but. It was in light of what God has done, how he's cared for us for generations and generations, made promises. Now we're here. I'm serving the Lord. You do serve you, you know. There's plenty of choices out plenty there. Plenty of choices out there. Um, you're all wrong. <laughs> yeah. As for me and my house, we're serving the Lord. As you, as you approach that as the jumping off point, you know, what was it that you were like wanting to place in front of people well the 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 key to that in this sermon was the uh we I mean, the context was the build up to that which again you did more of that um uh, than than i did but the landing point is the same and that is that i i'm not just going to worship god what joshua said is i'm going to serve yeah. the lord and so it's serving and it's serving the lord yeah you know that that our, our that, that in response to who god is i now will live a certain way and my living is a living of serving the lord and so and that that was that was my highlight and then i think out of that i think this is where i was emphasizing the lord yeah that whatever you do it's for the lord when you use this i love this this idea <coughs> you had this kind of like dichotomy that almost that that led back to the the growth message from last week into this week is like the idea of knowledge versus values yeah you know knowledge understands values transform and and how i took that is it puts it into action values come from knowledge yeah values come from experience and you won't do it with you won't do it with any kind of integrity if if, if it's not a value yeah you'll do it with you'll do it out of C- compulsion or yeah. com- obligation, obligation. You'll do fear, it with, or some, something like that, some yeah. motivation will cause you to act a certain way. And a lot of people, then, to be fair, a lot of people didn't talk about this, but a lot of people do the things of the Christian faith because they feel like that's the kind of thing that they should do, and if they don't do them, God will be angry with them. Yeah, we hear which that is, a lot. Actually, which is still the in our- reverse. Of the of the you said it a little while ago. It's, it's the reverse of the way the, the the way that the serving is is motivated. It's the it's motivated because we look at the God that we worship. We take in the greatness of the God that we worship. We learn more about this God who is great and sovereign and forgiving and all the, the qualities of God. And in response to that, we say, "Well, why? That's the God I want to." serve that i want to do it because those things are true that's when it becomes the value that leads to action yeah and that's to me as i as i looked as i was listening watching your sermon and going back to that joshua 24 that i think that's that was his that was his that was the heart that he was conveying to the people right because he's learned this value over the course of his entire life watching what god has done 
so then it has transformed his life. It had yeah. been transforming his life. I mean, he was one of the 12 spies, and he was only one of two that said, yes, we believe God can conquer the <laughs> giants. Like one of my favorite moments. Oh, and my gosh. The, others, the other 10 are going, no, there's no way. They're too big. They're too dominant. And he's like, let's go. Yeah, yeah. And But but he's at this point again saying, this is this is what I'm going to do. And that, it, it tied, and you mentioned in, in your message, Several passages, John, uh, John thirteen, looking at the the washing of the disciples' yeah. feet, Mark ten forty five, First Timothy four fourteen, all about the Lord and serving the Lord. But then we landed in the Romans twelve, kind of yeah. like laundry list of things. Interesting, there. But, yeah, yeah, it was kind of inserted in the middle of you know what six or so six six yeah. different things of the, the imperative to do the, do these things. Yeah. So as you're looking at that that. That passage uh, from from Romans twelve, you know, we we both kind of went to the background a little bit, you know, like what has what has Paul done in the previous eleven chapters? Yeah. Uh, because it is, it uh, Romans twelve represents the shift yeah. in the tone. Um, you use the indicative imperative, which I, I, I personally I love that 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 uh, that that's a very theological indicative yeah. imperative yeah, yeah. C- uh, contrast, which in in a lot of times. You'll get that in a in a verse, you know, or a set of verses. Romans is one of those where there's eleven chapters of indicative, yeah. and then you know five chapters of imperative, right? It, um, but it, but it really turns in, in chapter it does, twelve. It does help though. The, it does help when you're dealing with a a a sort of a, a, a rapid fire yeah. uh, it, it commands. To say, uh, you know, because I was, I, I think I said it. I, th- I know I said it in the live services. I think I said it in the recorded services that that I struggle with this passage uh, with a, with a series of things. If they're taking in uh, taken in isolation, yeah, it just be like me saying, you know, Zach, why don't you go do this? Yeah. And it's like, well, uh, okay. Zach's like, I don't, I don't, I will or I won't or whatever. But there's no internal drive yeah. behind that. So you, there has to be the eleven chapters that precede it in order for the twelve chap- for the five chapters to to have any kind of. I mean, it's, yeah, they got to have any kind of value behind it. The, yeah. the values are set in the eleven chapters. Yeah, and that's where you kind of talked about. You asked this. You verbalized the question that that people might have about the sincerity of one's love. You know, so he talks about let love be sincere, and you're like, well, well what if it's not? What if it's not? You yeah. know, and and what if my love for the Lord is not sincere? What if my love for others is not? Sincere. So, as you're yeah. thinking about that sincerity piece, how important is that in no, driving I mean, the train for serving the Lord and in, in with others? I, I think this goes back to the to to the first off, it's a lived experience because somebody somebody listening would be asking the same question because at some point I would have, I would have been asking the same question. You know, how sincere is my commitment to value other people above my above myself the whole philippians yeah two moment how how you know and what and just because you say i'm supposed to do this and what am i what do i do with that I, I, again I, i'm trying to figure out how i'm supposed to do the thing you're going to do and and and, and that really well was the setup for for the serving the one verse that had the, the serving language in there so once it, you know once we sort of got the how do we appropriate this into our, our lives in general, you can apply that same thing to the to the serving. I can appropriate it because I was a sinner. Yeah. I was I had no hope for for salvation. I was the one who was uh, not n- not righteous before God, and I was the one who Jesus did all this work on, yeah. on my behalf. So I'm, now I'm motivated to do what is it you want me to do? Oh, I love sincerely. I'm on it. You yeah. Know, you want me? Oh, you want me to serve? I'm on it. Yeah. Yeah, and I love that because you know that's what separates. Christian service from other types of service. And that's kind of what I was wanting to highlight with that let love be genuine, let love be sincere passage, you know, that the that the motivation of our our service is not to be seen. It's not to be right. a- applauded, you know, that the word uh genuine or sincere in that in the Greek is the anti-hypocrite it, it's anti, it's yeah, I love that. anti an, I think it's anahupokritos, <laughs> you know, and I just I had a lot more to it because I, to me in the Greek language, the word hypocrite is one of the most fascinating words because it does literally mean stage actor, yeah. you know, coming right what, out right out of the theater. Yeah, one who does We're, what they do. That mask. Yeah, and one who whose motivation is applause, one whose motivation is that performative yeah. kind of thing, and we live 
in a time where service becomes very performative. People, mm-hmm. and I didn't get into this as much, but people do things that are great for, you know, the, the TikTok posts, you know, they do things in order to gain the scholarships or whatever. And, and, you know, there's some value, I guess, in that, but that's not Christian service, right? I mean, Christian service is one that is motivated not to be seen because Christ came not to, we both talked about the Mark 10. 10. Christ came not to serve, but to be served and to give his life as a ransom for many. You know, that, that was, that's so, important to me. Qu- yeah. Question for you. When, um, when you go to the, uh, the passage or when you go to the, to, to the, application and you are putting out that list of possibilities of where where things can be done yeah. and, and where to serve even the even the call to fill out a survey yeah. that uh, that was uh, that has now since you know, gone, live, is, yeah. gone live um how do you process the 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 fact that that is could be perceived by some people as as self-serving how, yeah. how does that how does that become not that, and actually something that is because we're talking about something that is motivated by this core that has this this um, internalization that has this genuineness is not motivated by be, being seen and it's, it has that humility in there, and yet then they were say okay now now i'm going to do I want you to do something that self that's going to serve this place where i i where I serve well, I understand that I think. But one of the things that you have said, I think you said it in this pat message as well, but I know you've said it in previous messages, is that – no, I'm pretty sure you said it in this, this message as well, is that the church is the largest charitable organization in the world. It's volunteer, yeah. Volunteer organization. Yeah. And I think you might have said charitable. Uh, 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 the, we depend on volunteers, and the yeah. church is the largest volunteer army in the, in the world. Yeah, I think I, I was, and, and, and it has been historically for – at almost as long as the church has existed, it has been. And and what is the what has been the result? I mean, the result. And you you've talked about this, I think, brilliantly in other messages where you've actually listed out all the hospitals and universities and yeah. and, and 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 food pan. I mean, just laundry lists of things, and say, well, we are you and I personally are in this because we believe that the 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 gospel of Jesus Christ is not only it is but it's not only a one way ticket to heaven but it also is the vehicle that brings the will of God of the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven yeah. that that's we believe that so we have devoted our lives to in service to the Lord through the church yeah. Because we believe it is the the vehicle that that, that both communicates the gospel, the, the the good news of Jesus, in word and in deed and in what we do, and so uh, to me it's it's and I and in fairness and and we have talked about this in other messages before we've seen churches where. You don't have to go through the headlines very deeply to find a church that has abused that, you know, and they've made it very self-serving, you know, right. where, where pastors are way overpaid, the staff is, you know, the, the volunteers are abused and cast aside. I think we do a not perfect job, but I think we do a pretty good job of trying to appreciate our volunteers, also not overwork our volunteers. Yeah. This is why we call for, really the reason that we call for volunteers as much as we do to serve is so that the other volunteers who are already putting in a ton of time yeah. can get a break as well. It's not so you and I are getting a break or yeah, other staff yeah. members are getting a break because actually more volunteers means typically more work for us. Training and training coaching and, and yeah. coaching and dealing with, you know, the scheduling the, and yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, and the personalities and the opinions and all that. We love it. But we also are calling for more more volunteers, so that the people, you know, the eighty twenty principle, yeah. eighty per, you know twenty eighty percent of the work gets done by twenty percent of the people. We want to balance that out, yeah. because what happens is those twenty percent are getting burnout, and this is not just FPC. I think actually we're probably a little bit more like. 70 30 or 65 35 i think a little bit more balanced because there's a lot that goes on hey we're, i'm starting to look through these surveys that have come nice, come in yeah. and i'm I, I i'm saying something about this in my post tomorrow so i'm really proud of our yeah. people what a great i mean they're doing great things yeah yeah so i you know that's but i like that i, I it's not it's, it's not, not really self-serving it's not for self-serving us. I mean, I, 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 if it's authentic, it can't. If it's authentic because you believe in this this entity, 
called the Church of Jesus Christ that has been established by God as the Bride of Christ, as the as the place where the the Spirit of God it, it, it dwells and, and works. And you know, if we're going to exercise our spiritual gifts, which which is a whole separate topic, that whole neither one of us sorry, yeah. n- neither one of us brought into no, this. We just, we it could had, easily yeah. have come into this Very message. Easily, yeah. Work into your giftedness uh, area. It, well, if we have spiritual gifts that are meant to be given th- through you for the building up of the church, well, you need the church. So if yeah. it's all of that is authentic, then I would just say to a person who says that's just self-serving, so well, you're just jaded. Yeah, and I, that's, I, that's one of the reasons I think that— And you don't have a very great great ecclesiology, a great yeah. understanding of the church. Well, and I think that's one of the reasons that in this laundry list from Romans 12, 9 through 13, he put that—and I, I spent a little time on this— the outdo one another in showing honor, which is a great phrase in the Greek where there's this competitive, almost competitive vibe to it. And it, and I'm not sure that I articulated it exactly the way I wanted to, but it answers that question that you just, that you just brought up about being self-serving. No, no, no. It's not about uh, you serving me or Pastor John or the session. You look across the room and see people who are handing out worship guides and bulletins, and you look at people who've got the blue shirts on and are serving your children, and you look at the people who are showing up for a kids' pack, and you look at the people. When you sign up to serve, you're actually serving them. You know, you're serving the Lord by also yeah. partnering with them is probably the better way to put it. You're partnering with them. It's you're valuing their service by serving yourself. You're you're saying, yeah, what you're doing is so awesome. I want to join in that service to the yeah. Lord because we think it's greater. So, I think that, that's a mental shift, though. That, it is, that, that, and it that's is. What, that's that's the difficult part of, of preaching a message like this is that we're trying to. to Get in the heads of everybody, ourselves included, and say there's a mental shift to how you think about what you do. You're not doing this out of obligation, not doing it out of duty, but you're doing that because a it's, it's focused on the Lord. We both talked about that, but it's also um, but it's also something that it, that is you know is going to change lives. Yeah, it's going to impact other people. So that, that that's that uh, you know it's. It's 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 that mental shift that uh, that that's hardest I think to get across. Well, and that's and that's one of the reasons. And I didn't have it in the earlier draft, but I kept you know you talking about addressing concerns. That's one of the reasons I put that Mary Martha scene in there. Great scene because people will look at that. You've heard it. You need I Mary and Martha. You yeah. can't have, you can't have just. And Mary also serves later on too. That's yeah. what I was saying. And Martha definitely shows her devotion, but in this particular instance, she's letting the service get in the way. <laughs> Of the devotion. And so what she's got is she's got it reversed. She's got the, the equation reversed, you know. Um, and, and so that was kind of an attempt to address that, to say, look, there's even biblical warrant to say, yeah, there's certain types of service or, or certain hearts that, that, that aren't ready for service. But just because you're a devoted person, like, that should lead you to service. Mm-hmm. And so if you're, that's why I said, if you're going to be a Mary, okay, then pick up a sponge because that's, that's what she does later on. I mean, in this scene, that's one of the things I love about the Gospels. And when you see the same people pop up, you know, like the Mary, Martha, Lazarus, like triptych that pop up. Yeah. So, so you actually see the progression of their faith and their relationship to Jesus from one scene to the next scene to the next scene. And I, I think that's, that's so, uh, I always love those little but, snippets. But, but what I loved what what you said was that it is the internal she wanted to sit in devotion before her Lord that leads to the external. Eventually, you know, she's the yeah. one who's drying his her, his feet with her with her hair, yeah. and this is an extravagant act of service to the Lord. And they they're not separated. They're no. not isolated. They're not independent of each other. They're not existing on their own. They 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 work together. And this is it. I think in in some ways that's what. This entire message, I'm saying, because this is true, you know, because it's true of who God is, and we are devoted, and we love this God, uh, and then then we will do these things. Yeah. Not that we're going to do these things just because we're going to do those things with no no connection whatsoever. Yeah. I think that's that's the that that's the piece that's that that I think most people who don't serve are missing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what did you leave out this week? Was there anything that you're like, man, another, another, another? and you had a baptism to consider in yes, classic as well, yes. too. So was there something that you're like? Uh, well, the whole, the whole spiritual giftedness, there's a great illustration about that I have for, you know, working with your gifts. And, and when you, when you're serving in your gifted areas, you're going to be, you know, the burnout 
factor is a lot less. Mm-hmm. The energi- being energized by by the serving is a lot higher. Uh, but there's just no time for. It. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to. I would have to have introduced an, another set of scriptures, yeah. another concept, and made the point. And there's just no time for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I spent some time talking about use the gifts that you have, not the gifts that you wish you had, uh, because I think that that tends to happen. People have a gift. They think that they want a gift, or they think they have a gift. They don't really have a gift, and it leads to burnout. And it's usually because they're not in the spot that they are. But I obviously could be more about that uh, in there. I, the thing that was interesting to me that I, I just mentioned it and then moved right through it was the idea, you know, the, uh, the concept of the love section in that, you know, where he talks about let love be genuine, love one another with brotherly affection, seek to show hospitality. Um, there's actually three different Greek terms for love used in that I mean, he he uses agapao, he uses philia, and storge, all three in that mm-hmm. area. So I would have done a little bit more with that nuancing. Yeah. I mean, again, if this was a Bible study, I probably would have said, okay, well, what are the how, what are the similarities and differences, and why would you use one to the other? And the other piece was that I actually did have a section that I cut out literally the morning of because it was going longer was the idea that we're called to serve both internally and externally. Oh, yeah. Because he has the verse 10, let love one another with a brotherly affection. So it's the, it's actually the word Philadelphia. So for folks that are PA friends, that's it right yeah, there. Brotherly but, love. But then he, he talks about the, 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 the seek to show hospitality with his, which is Philizinia. So you've got the brotherly love and the love of strangers. So I had a piece there, which I've, I preached that before. So I was like, you know yeah. what? You, you Beat, don't beat that horse uh-huh. here. It's not as important for this week. But I would have gone a little bit into that to say um, there is an internal and an external component. But that was really beyond what we were we were looking at for this week. So um, yeah, a lot, lot, a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff uh, for uh, this week's uh, message. Well, that that kind of brings us to uh, Pastor John. With you know, we've talked about we're going to be you, helping facilitate facilitators. I guess that's right. If you're in a small group or you're thinking about this, you know what what comes next for small group discussion. And and I, I want to talk a little bit about something you did in your message and how that would uh, I think how you would. If you were sitting in someone's small group, what would you do to extend this conversation? Because you had four takeaways at the end of your message. Mm-hmm. Um, my big picture takeaway was just find a place to serve, and here's the survey that's coming out, and, and get ready to sign up. Which we, yeah, yeah, which we, since we, gone out, and we're going to be contacting people. But you had four things really quickly. You had this idea of a get it done. Attitude, eagerness, yeah. speed, haste, drive. These are yeah. all words that you you used. You had this. Uh, the one that really I loved was your second second application point, um, which was serve with enthusiasm. And and the phrase that I loved was like it matters because because it, because does. it does. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That, like you're not you're not doing a mental uh, gymnastics there, but uh, yeah. and. Uh, that, and, that, so I did a little more distinction in the live services than I did in the re- recorded services, but the first one has to do with, and I think I did say this, is it has to do with we're, we're trying, we, we, we're, we're, we're energetic in our desire to get the, the work done. So if we're, if we're going to be doing mission work, if we're going to be doing kids pack, if we're going to be doing, um, you know, passing out bulletins, whatever, whatever it is, we're, there's like this drive to get that work done. The second one's like how we are as we were doing that work, which is that we're doing it. And I love the image. I love the image out of the the uh, um, the, the Greek lexicon, t- t- uh, lectionary. T- uh, the lexicon talks about it's also related to the image of boiling water. Yeah. That it's it's, it's, it's the it's the emotion of you know intensity and fire that there's there's energy behind it and we're excited we're excited about this and then of course it's football season so I had to, I had to say make the analogy of, of being to in take, football football yeah. season season everybody feels that same way about football season it's that 
in serving. Imagine that. Yeah. I didn't say that. I should have should have hit that harder, a little harder. Said yeah, eighty five thousand people like that that were serving with the same veracity as they're screaming at a referee for imagine making if a, bad, a thousand bad call, of us yeah. in this church were yeah. all serving with that same energy that we put into whatever the thing is that gets us excited. For a lot of people, it's sports. What, what if what if that were it 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 would it would change us and yeah. it, what would happen? I didn't. Again, didn't say this, but it would it would definitely change us. But so I, this is a, maybe a question for the small groups: is like, what if you found your place of service? So that's part of this part of the thing is to find that place that matters to you. But when you were serving, there was a there was this boiling energy, fire, good, you know, positive you know, uh, 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 emotion that was behind us. Like, man, I'm so pumped up about this. Yeah, and what I would, if that were to happen? And I, and I think for a small group, I think it would be an interesting discussion. If I was sitting there going, what is it that gets you that fired up? Great question. Naturally, you know, what is it that you're already passionate about? And, and you know, maybe it's sports or, or maybe, you know, what is it? And I would even say, look at your, your, your vocational life, you know, look at your family life. What is it about those areas that you get really excited about? Is it, you know, planning trips or is it, uh, is it some sort of a project management? Do you really love leading people? In, you know, I, I, I'm shocked when I talk to people in the church that I don't, you know, I don't interact with them from a vocational standpoint. I'll interact with them in the church and they're very quiet and they're very reserved. And then I find out that they lead like 150 employees and yeah. they have to run staff meetings. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, why aren't you have an equipping? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have an, equ- Oh, I can't teach a small group, but you lead a hundred. I mean, like, and, and I want to be like, why aren't you like, that's what I want to say is like, how do those things? Yeah. There, there are natural and, and natural yeah. and trained abilities or, or, or experience. Uh, Produced uh, uh, abilities that people get. That th- those are the kind of things I was thinking about as I was saying words similar to that. I was thinking about. I'm looking out at lawyers. I'm looking at teachers. I'm looking at uh, healthcare workers. I'm looking at lots of people who have skills in the workplace so that they could easily be put, put to work easily, in the church. Easily, easily. I think e- I- even the skills that it takes to do the job can actually. Uh, be applied to teaching groups of teaching or, 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 or other, other acts of service. And I think, and this is something I, I would, I would ask, I think, I'd, again, if you were and I were leading a small group of people, I think it would be different because I think we know the inner workings of a church. I, what I want to say to people is the inner workings of a church of like ours, you know, of our size and our uh, multifaceted approach to ministry is not dissimilar from a small to mid-sized business um, in terms of the organization it takes to get things done, in terms of the metrics that we use to to inform our decisions, mm-hmm. because we believe God. And that's not a net. I think some people have this mentality that that how we make business, how we make church decisions is just all we do is read the Bible and pray, and then we expect the Holy Spirit just to birth right. in us the right ideas. Not to diminish that that we actually do those things, yeah. but then we go back and look at the data, right? I mean, I was sharing data with you yesterday. That's you know? great. And, and, and by the way, my wife helped design the spreadsheets that we're using, and where did she learn how to do that? She wasn't. She's a, an English major in college, uh-huh. right? She learned how to do those because she became On an efficiency job. expert yeah. in a lo- two very That's large right. medical device companies, and now she gets super excited about creating the ability for the church to be able to see how things are trending and tracking. Yeah. And it's it really valuable information for us. So all that to say is what is it in your ordinary life? There may be things happen that you do in your ordinary life right now yeah. that are that are effortless for you that could be invaluable to yeah. those for whom it's not effortless yeah. in, in the church. Yeah. And and I so I would say what are those things in your job, in your family that are effortless? And do you think they can be used for the glory of God? Because I guarantee you they can be. <laughs> well, I would also add this question then, and it was sort of my my last my last point. Um, this is for small group small group discussion. Is there a place in the church where you are serving the Lord? Yeah. And if there is not, I would just encourage you in your group say what could I do? What could we do? Have the conversation. What could I, well, I don't I don't know what it could be. I, well, I don't know what it could be. What what could it be? And that's where in a small group discussion you can have people go back and forth and ask, "Well, what are you good at? What do you love to do? What's your personality like?" And 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 even like I 
I'd get out like a whiteboard or get out like a, a, a pad and just for each – because you can do this in a small group with eight to ten people. You can go for two weeks and just put everybody's name up there, and if they're not – Serving just people say, Oh, I need to take this test or I need to take this survey yeah, to figure yeah. out my spiritual gifts are. Yes, those are all fine, They're but you great, can all, but you probably know most of it. Are most exactly. of the time when, when, when I've done spiritual gifts assessments, no, no surprises, there are no surprises. No, no yeah. surprises. They just put names That's around right. things That's that you right. already know to be true. But and you could do that in your group with people just talking to you, and 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 even if even if out of that group you said. Well, there's something here, but I'm not sure what it is. Then you can take that information and bring it to us, and we will say, "Oh, dude, I know exactly where you'd go. I know exactly where God could use you." And and I, I we would have a, a laundry list of ideas because we, so you could have that conversation in your group. And if you haven't filled out the survey that was sent to your email, then go back and fill that survey out, yeah. and you can probably hit that and either either fill in something that is on the list or. Put put whatever Other. your group decide whatever yeah. your group came up with and say yeah. I would like to like good example I don't know if we'll do this but there was one of the new members one of the new members said she's done a lot of work with prison ministry yeah I don't think we have prison we ministry as part of our collection of m- the many many things that we support here and I said to her then I said I don't know that we'll we, we will start something like this but because you are here because you have an experience here that it, may be the door opening for us to begin doing something like that because that's the kind of thing that we could do and. You could lead. You could create a, a, an opportunity for other people to serve in prison ministry. I love what you just said there, because and I think it's so important. Just because we don't have something doesn't mean God's not opening the door for something to exist. Yeah, um, I, I think that's how that's how everything that we do, everything now. That's got started. Our, that's exactly right. I mean, that's how our special needs ministry got started. Yeah. We had a family who'd been here a long time. That's how Oasis got started that's that's that how way. Oasis so got started. Recovery got yeah. started that way. It's one person, two people, three people passionate about something and saying, what if we did this? And in Oasis, Celebrate Recovery, special needs, people began to serve that were not serving in those same capacities and or not serving at all, praying about where God wanted them to serve. And they felt the call of God in those areas when the door when the door was open, and that's that is how it goes. Which is also one of the distinctives about our church. We're yeah. not the only ones who have uh, missions and ministries l- like this, but we do have them, and we do have a full range of things that we do. Maybe it doesn't include prison ministry, might in the future, but we have a full range of things. And contrast that with other churches. We know of other churches in this very town that are shutting those things down. Yeah, we do. And uh, and we are we feel like that's uh, well I feel like that's it's a, not our call it's, 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 it's their, it's their call, call but uh, I feel like that's that that it, the right thing for us to do yeah is to continue to make a positive impact on the community around us that's, that's true. and on our own on our own community one one last thing I want to highlight from your message and it was it funny be, be, was the 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 third point. Uh, in your in your applications was you know serve throughout your whole life. There's uh, no there's yes. no retirement. It yeah. was funny because I hadn't heard your message when I preached when I taught agape class. I don't know if anybody told you this, but like I knew we were both preaching on service, and I was uh, I was. Um, I was doing announcements at the beginning of Agape, which is what I typically do. I, I echo whatever announcements are in yeah, that yeah. I'm going to do. And then maybe I'll add some additional ones that are specific to that, that age demographic. And, uh, I put the, I put the call out for people to sign up to serve in children's ministry. And I'm looking at a room of 65 to 85 year olds. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and a lot of those po- folks have served in children's ministry before, um, and aren't any longer. And my my my, I, I my hear what's coming. My point was <laughs> in that thing was you know there's Moses was called uh, when he was well into his seventies to go lead four hundred thousand whining, complaining Israelites <laughs> across the desert. We're just calling you to to once a month to lead a handful of well-meaning, although sometimes high high maintenance children, uh, on Wednesday nights. Right, know? right. I, I, as that Abraham was called well into his seventies to go to the land that God would show him, and he walked across the desert. Oh, we're to it. You know, like, there is no retirement in the Bible, and some of the greatest ministry work was done by folks well into their 70s, yeah. 80s, and 90s. So um, it was funny because then I heard your message. like, okay, they they heard it twice then, uh, at least that class. Did anybody did. say anything? In the, it, it, I said, they, they, they did. They did say something. And, and, and you know what? 
Because I had people come up to me, the older people come up to me and said, okay, I'm, I'm, cha- I'm challenged. Yeah. I, I hear it. And, and I want to say this too, because, you know, uh, I think this is important, and this is not necessarily small group related, but I do think serving outside of your particular comfort zone or, or serving outside of your particular age demographic is helpful. And I think for the older generation to hear this, and they say, well, why don't the parents just sign up to serve? Okay, yes. But it's it's a very contradictory statement because they will in this in that in the same breath say well we are in one of the largest unchurched generations in the United States history in terms of the adults you know the the, the millennials uh gen gen x gen z the largest unchurched generation so do we want those folks teaching the next generation yeah, why don't we have? The... How about we? How about we take the generations that are still relatively churched and yeah. still relatively biblically re- literate, leading so that those unchurched generations have a place to find faith, right? Yeah, and, and what and... a great example for them to say. Okay, so my my personal future for, of serving. Look, that person is seventy years old and is involved. Exactly. In, well, I mean, we you've mentioned several times the the number of um, older folks who are mm-hmm. serving in children's ministry right now. They're serving in children's ministry right now. Yeah. I could be that kind of person as I get into my 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s yep. and just like them. Yep. It's a great way to model something for them as well. Not just to do do them something that but but also to model something for others. And something for for groups and this might be this might be kind of a kickoff question related to this is if if you are have been in the church world for a while, you know who was it that served to get you where you are? You know who yeah. who was that? You know what groups of people was it Outside of your family, if you were raised in church, outside of your family, if you weren't raised in church, who was it that brought you in? You know, who was it that really made that impact to where you're, you're saying, I want to have a faith in Jesus Christ. I want to be on this journey of faith with Jesus Christ. Because there was, there was, and there was a somebody or somebodies, and who was that, and what, what is their. What does their witness yeah. mean for you? Or just imagine if they didn't do it. Matt, yeah, exactly. If, if those, yeah. if that generation didn't do the serving, what impact it would have? I mean, uh, the thing, things fold after one generation if Absolutely. everybody stops doing these things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, John, uh, thank you once again for hanging out. If anyone, well, One missed, more to go. One more this week. You're in Vine, uh, to cl- in Vine. to close it Commun- out. Communions this week. Communions um, this week. All, all services. Uh, Josh Schweitzer is going to be in classic, yeah. and uh, so that that's going to be fun. I'm I'm going to be here. Um, I'm going to be actually floating through children's ministry because I don't get to see children's ministry a oh, whole lot. Very nice, and and uh, it's kind of and in, secret uh, secret donuts as well. Secret donuts for youth. Yeah. Uh, so I'll probably pop my head in over there. I'm still teaching agape class this week, but uh, but yeah. So next week there'll be three of us in the armchairs. We'll be closing out this series yeah. with Josh and you, and um, we're we're definitely going to have to get on the stick. Make sure we get these done by. Tuesday because we've got small groups on Wednesday. They're going to be using this material. Right, that's right. That's right. So, so if anyone missed uh, this week's messages, make sure you head to our website, fpclakeland.org. Go to the sermon page in the worship archive tab. Um, you can also find us on YouTube by searching FPC Lakeland. Make sure you hit the subscribe uh, button and the bell icon to be notified when a new uh, video drops of any kind. We're mm-hmm. going to be actually putting out a lot more videos in the in the coming weeks about various aspects aspects of the church so great place to do that and wherever you're listening to this podcast make sure you hit the subscribe button and leave us a review um helps other people find this podcast a lot of folks in the last couple weeks finding the podcast after the grow continually messages they're like oh my gosh this is and I'm like, well, where have you been? We've only 175 episodes. Yeah, I didn't say that to him, but that yeah, in my yeah, life, yeah, yeah, yeah. 175 episodes hey. in. This is a unique thing that we do. I don't know any other church that does it the way we do it. I mean, nationwide. I, you know, I was in Fuller Seminary in July, and I talked to some some 40-something pastors, and they're like, well, how's your preaching ministry go there? And I explained it to them, and they're like. Wow, Wait a minute. What? That's weird. Yeah. And, I and say, then we talk about it every it's, week. It's like, yeah, it, but it's awesome because our folks, and I think it's, we're seeing the results of that. I think we're seeing the results of that, that, that double reinforcement. If, if the old adage is true, people don't, um, don't really learn things until they've heard it three times and practice it seven times. 
they can hear this message three times, twice on Sunday and once on the in the armchair. So yep. uh, we're, we're trying to four times count, and, and then a small group. And then if you can do a small group, yeah. now it's four times. So they're one more than what they then they then they can start practicing it. Yeah. So I think we're seeing that. And John, I always appreciate you taking uh, your time out of your day and week to be able to do that uh, with us. Yeah, well, I appreciate what you're doing. It's great, great work. I love the armchair and uh, very unique. And I hope I hope everybody listening is enjoying it and appreciates the good Dr. McGowan's work with this. It's great stuff. I appreciate that, John. And uh, for everyone else, we'll see you next time.